if you have a slight interest in human evolution, you have most likely heard of the famous Lucy from the Australopithecine genus. Well, to be exact, Lucy was of the species Australopithecus afarensis, and her fossils date back to approximately 3.2 million years. I created a video a while ago where I explained the entire evolutionary timeline quite quickly, yes. Here you can see the thumbnail, and I highly recommend the watch, but to elaborate a bit on the information in that video, Australopithecus afarensis is the fourth species in the evolutionary timeline of the Australopithecines. My name is Kaylee, and in today's video we are going to talk about the Australopithecus afarensis fossils that have been discovered in the Sterkfontein Capes in South Africa. And the fact that they are a million years older than previously thought. If you've watched me for a while, or you've seen more videos that I created, I often mention the Cradle of Humankind in South Africa. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's incredibly significant in our quest for uncovering more about the human evolutionary timeline due to the amount of hominin fossils that have been discovered there. In this area, there are many caves, and these caves are the locations where we find most of these hominin fossils, including the Sterkfontein Caves. So the location of the Sterkfontein Caves is just, as you can see on the map here, 40 kilometers, or for my American viewers, 25 miles, northwest of Johannesburg, or as we would say in the Netherlands, Johannesburg. And this cave system is of special interest to the paleoanthropologists, as there have been many discoveries that have been made here of fossils inside the cave system of the Australopithecine genus, the Paranthropus genus, and the Homo genus. So the oldest specimen ever discovered so far of the Australopithecus afarensis species dates back to approximately 3.9 million years ago. And the specimen that are the subject of today's video used to be dated to have lived between 2 and 3 million years ago. Although, these dates used to be contested by a large group of paleoanthropologists. So the Sterkfontein Caves have many areas inside of it, and they are divided into six areas that are called members. So you have six members. <laughs> members 1, 2, 3 are still underground, while members 4 to 6 are above ground, as they have been exposed to the surface due to erosion. That can occur. That happens. Member 4 is a cave infill where the majority of the Australopithecus fossils have been discovered. A fact that might be good to know is that for a long time it was believed that the evolution of Australopithecus africanus came quite linear from Australopithecus afarensis, but as scientists have developed new dating methods and tested the sediments found in the Member 4 area of the Sterkfontein cave, they were actually quite baffled, and this discovery shows that the evolutionary timeline of the Australopithecines is much, much more complex than previously thought, and it's not linear. Again, we can see that evolution is not a straight line, not in the Australopithecus genus as well. So the member 4 area is perceived as a cave infill. The many cavities in this area got filled with calcite flowstone. This cemented the breccia, which is a kind of sand-like layer on the bottom. And most likely this resulted in cutting off the entrance to the area, eventually. Eventually after that, the breccia and the calcite partially dissolved and eroded over time, leaving quite an irregular surface that includes many cavities once again. And of course, as you can imagine, these later formed cavities also got filled with more calcite flowstone. And these filled the cavities with flowstone that are found to indeed be younger than the breccia surrounding the cavities. So you have holes that were filled later, but the surface is the same. So we have young and old soil together. It's hard to date things like that because you know, which part am I in, you know? Which part is this piece of sediment from? So scientists developed a new technique to date the sediments in the area that is known as member 4. And this technique is called 
isochron burial dating. And this is a dating method based on the radioactive decay of the found quartz at the site that was first exposed to secondary cosmic radiation close to the ground and which then got buried. To overly simplify this dating method and for the experts watching this video thinking to themselves, woman, this is not really how it's done. Trust me, I know. But I want everyone to at least be able to grasp the sort of method of dating without feeling overwhelmed and without me becoming too scientific for it. 11 blocks of chert were collected from the excavated wall in the lower part of the member four area. These blocks were then crushed. This is needed to retrieve the quartz from the blocks, but just crushing them won't do much. You just have a crushed block. To retrieve the quartz from the crushed blocks, they purify the crushed fractions daily by draining them in a heated 5% nitric acid and hydrofluoric acid mixture. The cleaned quartz was then dissolved in another nitric acid and hydrofluoric acid mixture and then spiked by a solution created especially for this dating method. I wasn't able to figure out which solution this was, as the original paper that's released by PNAS.org speaks of a solution prepared in-house. So, no idea exactly. Eventually, after a lot of different processes had happened and you know, whatever, too much for me to explain, the specimen were mixed with niobium and then analyzed by an accelerator mass spectrometry, or in short, AMS, that was located at the Prime Lab at the Purdue University in the state of Indiana in the United States. The isochron samples then showed an age of between 3.41 and 3.7 million years with a minor analytical error. And the deviation in all samples was no more than 1.09, which indicates that all of the samples that were taken were buried in a single event. This date, the between 3.4 and 3.7 million years old, is of significance because many of the Australopithecine specimen that were found at the member four area were found extremely close by the isochron dated samples. For instance, just to give an example, there have been several mandibular teeth found less than a meter away from one of the isochron samples and another partial skeleton was found just two and a half meters higher in the same deposit. The ages from this new study are significantly older than the previously thought age range for the deposits in the member four area. They used to think that these deposits were approximately between 2.61 and 2.07 million years old. But this new study proves that it's more closely towards 3.4 million years old, with the oldest possible date at 3.7 million years old, which is close to the oldest ever discovered fossil of an Australopithecus genus specimen. So in the past, the dating of the burial sediments at Sterkfontein have been questioned because the sediment dates came up older than the dating of the fossil teeth, the dating of the flowstones, and therefore these dates and all of the research done have always been contested. With this new burial dating method, the belief is that there is a much smaller margin for errors when using this isochron burial dating method. And, you know, a much smaller margin for errors is very positive when we try to discover and uncover more about the evolutionary timeline. This new dating method and these new dates indicate that the fossils found at this area of the Sterkfontein caves are not from near the end of the Australopithecine era, but that they actually date from the very beginning of the Australopithecine era, which is massive news. And you might think to yourself, wow, what's so massive about that? <laughs> like, it's not going to change the way that we look at them. Well, actually, this changes the entire perception of the earliest Australopithecines and the area which they inhabited, as it was long believed that they came from East Africa towards South Africa over time. But now that we know that some of the earliest living Australopithecines were living in South Africa already, <laughs> Our understanding of the species is completely broadening and changing and we can't look at them the same as before this study. So as you can imagine, there have been 
some concerns about the older dates for the area of member four. And the question that you might have is, how could the previous dating methods be this far off? Like by a million years far off? Well, the answer to that is that the area of member four is actually quite complex with young flowstone being deposited on and in the cavities of old sediment. And these flowstones can move the bones inside the cave, which then can result in archeologists finding these bones in much younger flowstone. And these flowstone deposits then show a different age because we usually date the sediments surrounding the bones when we cannot date the bones. And these bones are far older than the young flowstone in which they are found. The static Fontein caves are of utmost importance when it comes to the fossils, as this is the place with the most Australopithecine fossils anywhere in the world. But a big problem that we have is that during the excavations of this area in the 1930s and in the 1940s, the fossils that they discovered were all mixed together and therefore it has been unclear which specimen was found where and therefore it's even harder to date them. We cannot pinpoint that this piece was found there and the soil there is X amount of years old, so we know that this fossil is X amount of years old. We can do that. And because of the complexity of the cave system and the difficulty of getting accurate dates, it was usually just a sort of guesstimate. And these new dating methods are needed to give us more tangible proof, to take away the controversy and to be able to answer the questions that we have. When did they live? And these new dates show that the fossils in the Static Fontein cave system are much, much, much more older than previously thought. And this could change the way that we look at our entire evolutionary timeline. Older dates show that there is more time for evolution to occur. And when I say that, I mostly mean the importance of the role of the area of South Africa in regards to the earliest fossils, in comparison to the importance of the role of East Africa. The earliest fossils of the Australopithecine genus have now been found in both areas and not just in East Africa. And therefore, we can conclude that their habitat was much larger, a lot larger than we previously thought. Things like this are very important for our understanding of how evolution works and how the spread of species went. But with that said, this is the end of this video. There's not much more to say. I already included a bit of background information on like the dating method and yeah, this could have been like a four minute video, but I tried to make something for you. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click a link in the description down below or click a video in the end card. I would like to say a massive, massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. And if you enjoy my work, consider becoming a patron or a channel member. And yeah, this was Australopithecines at the Static Fontein Caves are a million years older than previously thought. Things keep getting older. See you in the next one. Bye.